listening to another Rock the Bells radio exclusive. Another Rock the Bells radio exclusive. The Drama Hour, hosted by Pat Poos. What's up, y'all? It's Pat Poos, Pat Poos. Hear it again in the Sirius XM app. Just search Pat Poos. Warning, 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 warning. The Drama King is in the building. Street, street, streets. If you hear my voice, that means you are now tuned into another episode of the Drama Hour. I go by the name of Pat Poose. This is Rock the Bells Radio. This is Sirius XM Radio. And y'all know one thing about me, right? Not just anybody could come up here. No fakes, no frauds, no phonies. All authenticity. So over the past 15, 10 to 15 years, I've been doing a lot of charity work. <clears throat> and in the process of me doing that charity work, you know, you know who's out there in the field because you're out there yourself. So a lot of people talk to talk, but they don't walk to walk. The brother that I have here today on the show, I seen him out there putting in that genuine work, y'all. When that pandemic happened, this brother was out there on the front line, giving out supplies, doing the right thing. Without further ado, live here today on the Drama Hour, y'all. Hold on. We got Mayor Eric Adams in the building. Y'all make some notes, man. Come on, man. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, what you said is uh, so significant uh, because uh, that, that word authentic is a powerful term. Yes. And when you are authentic, people want to depict you and mm. describe you. You know, so I'm like this bald-headed, earring-wearing, authentic guy, you mm -hmm. know, uh, cigar smoking, <laughs> Tito's drinking. And they're not used to that. Right. Mm -hmm. And they create this narrative. And our folks buy into that narrative. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing the longevity, you know, I remember you and I, you were out there, brother. Definitely, <laughs> you know man. We it, were it, out there. And then when you do an analysis and get away from the headlines and do an analysis, okay, so what has this brother done? It is mind-blowing how what we've delivered for black and brown people yes. in the city. Mm -hmm. And we just want to continuously go into that to, you know, when just as they did with David Dinkins, turning their base against him as he was delivering for yes. us. This is the same script, man. They pulled out the same book. Very interesting, <laughs> man. Very interesting that you mentioned Dinkins, man, because I remember when he got elected, I was very excited. Mm. Same thing for you Because right. I, I, I'll tell you a story Right mm -hmm. Growing up I remember being a child And I was in grade school And I had I had a, I had a Webster's Dictionary In front of me Right mm -hmm. And in the back In the back of the dictionary It listed all of the presidents Of the United States mm -hmm. So as I'm looking and I'm, and I'm in grade school I'm looking I noticed that all of the presidents Were Caucasian mm -hmm. So I asked the teacher I said hey You know why none of them are black And the teacher responded He reached over to me And said when pigs fly Mm, and that always mm, stayed with me. That was very mm, discouraging. Right. So the fact that you mentioned Dink is when he got elected, it was it was very inspiring for me. I said, wow. Right, right. Then right. Obama got elected. I said, oh, man. You, know, you understand <laughs> right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So seeing you right. go from being in the street, I mean, doing your charity work. You know what I mean? I remember when you was borough president. Right, right. You know, I right, also gained right. knowledge that you was a police officer. Right. But seeing you elevate to the level of being a, the second black man, correct me if I'm wrong, of right, New, right. New York. No, you're right. Powerful, very inspiring. Um, I grew up in, in Brooklyn, right, in Bed Star. So I live on the borderline of Bed Star and Brownsville. So I, I had to go to school in Brownsville. And in the summertime, we went to the pool. We went swimming in Brownsville. And I use my my journey making it out of that. Thank God for hip hop. I use my journey as an example to all the kids across America, all across the world, that you can be like Papa. Right, you can brother. be an artist. You can be an executive, which I am now. But you be an example that you can come up out of challenged neighborhoods and become the mayor. No, without a doubt. But, Speak you, about like, that. Like you, born in Brownsville, uh, grew up in South Jamaica, uh, Queens, and I'm perfectly imperfect, man. If you look at imperfection in the dictionary, you'll see me sitting there smiling, man. I've made so many mistakes uh, in my life. You know, my brother and I were arrested when we were 15 uh, for charged with burglary. Uh, you know, number runner, buying a nickel bag, making eight joints to make sure mommy gave wow. that extra three to pay the rent. Uh, dyslexia. I walk in the classroom every day, brother, and I tell people the story. And I used to get up in the morning and pray, God, don't make me read. Because if I read, kids would joke and laugh at me all day. They used wow. to put a sign in the back of my chair, dumb student. I was undiagnosed dyslexic. And when you tell your story, and these stories are so important because me and being mayor is not only... Uh, substantive is symbolism 
you know. So mm-hmm. uh, uh, I got rebaptized on Rikers Island with the inmates because I wanted these brothers to know that, listen, I see you, man. I've mm-hmm. been on Rikers Island more than any man in the history of this city, mm-hmm. talking with the inmates and the correction officers because they're both folks of color, right. you know, mm-hmm. and they got right. us all together. We need to realize that we're in this together. Right. But it's one thing to be a, the black mayor, but it's another. I turned the city around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this city, I inherited a mess, man. 40% increase in crime, no jobs, black unemployment with four times the rates of white. No one was dead, uh, 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 focusing on foster care children. NYCHA residents didn't have high speed, speed broadband. No jobs were coming here. Two years later, two years later, we have more jobs in the city, in the history of the city. More small businesses have opened in the history of the city. NYCHA residents have free high speed broadband to do telemedicine and tele uh, education. Education. Uh, we cut black unemployment of uh, is under eight percent. First time since 2019. Thirty mm. percent uh, decrease in Hispanic un- unemployment. When you look at my administration, first uh, uh, African American woman to, to be a chief, uh, to be first deputy mayor. Second one to be a chief of staff. First Filipino to be a deputy mayor. First uh, Dominican to be a deputy mayor. A uh, first uh, Spanish speaking to be a police commissioner. First Spanish speak- speaking to be a correction commissioner. You just look at my administration. First Korean to be a small business service. People are mad, man. All this chocolate mm-hmm. I got around me, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> that's, you know, that's why people are hating, right, man. Right, right. I'm messing with people paper. Mm-hmm. People were making so much money of the dysfunctionality of our city. And then I'm coming in and saying, wait, we're not doing this anymore. We did $6 billion in MWBEs, black and brown mm-hmm. business and women businesses are now getting access. So folks are sitting around and like, who, you, who do you think you are? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know? Right. you know, I'm just finishing that 30 year gap between Mayor Dinkins and me. It was 30 years. Mm. And he started a lot of this stuff, and now I'm picking up the baton because we had a 30-year gap, and I'm picking up the baton and just doing it right now. Right, right. Wow, man. Um, I want to talk about some interesting data came in today. So since your administration been in power, unemployment has 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 um a 30 a 30 percent. Yes. Right, thirty percent increase. Decrease. decrease. I'm sorry. You are thirty percent right. de- you decrease. It, you on it. Since your yes. since your regime, yes. regime has been in power, talk about that. It's so important. This is what I what I learned that, uh, you know, black and brown folks were not uh, getting the jobs because number one, folks may not even have money for the metro card. Mm. And you know how intimidating it is. You know, you we all can walk into a a, a corporate business. I mean, you, you couldn't deal, so it's no big thing. Right. But if you don't believe in yourself, or people have you know, crapped on you all your life. It's hard walking into these places to apply for a job. Mm. I know what, what's a resume and all of this stuff. So mm. what I did with Henry Garrido, the head of DC 37, I said, we have to go to the people. We can't be in a sterilized environment of city hall and help people come to us. Mm-hmm. So we started doing these hiring halls. Community right. centers of NYCHA in schools, mm. uh, right in the backyard of the people. And people started showing up. Mm. <laughs> you know, they started mm. showing up. Mm. Cats would be outside playing uh, CeeLo, and I would mm-hmm. step over to them and say, yo, man, there's a hiring hall in, in, in here. Right. Let's fall in. And they like, right. you know, wait a minute. The mayor's stopping, kicking. Right. Or a DJ now would be out late at night driving through and folks would close down their barber shops mm-hmm. and close down their beauty salons they'd be in the back doing cigars and some Hennessy we'd pop up in there and say yo man there's a hiring hall the next day right right you know <laughs> you gotta you gotta meet people where you, they are not where mm, you are right, <laughs> you gotta mm. meet people where you are and take them where they want to be and because of that you started to see this drop in black and brown unemployment mm. and we are now hiring cats <laughs> to see that when you gamefully employ, you don't have to be out there uh, slinging. You don't right. have to be out there right, doing right, madness, right. man. You know, folks don't folks don't want to be on the street corners, right? <laughs> you know, right, right. But you nah, gotta absolutely. eat. Absolutely, <laughs> we need we need definitely yeah. need right. opportunities. I want to switch gears a little bit. I got my brother General here. He's actually a cha- one of the chairmen at the Hip Hop Museum, yep. yes, which is an amazing establishment that's coming to New York City. We birthed this hip hop thing, <laughs> and I wanted to ask you yeah. because I, I know you played a, a major part in it. Yes, yes. Why did you feel it was important to help? Secure five million. You, 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 hey, well, I want to talk about that, but first, man, I need to rock my medallion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna take my chain off and give it to the man. <laughs> yeah, general, heavy on that, yeah. heavy on that machine. <laughs> you, know, you know, because uh, hip hop 
is taking accolades for what it has done in the international That's right. music. Because mm-hmm. it's international. It Young people all over the globe are doing the hip-hop thing. That's right. But you're missing the indirect impact. Right. You know, uh, right now, hip-hop is running the most powerful country on the globe. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't make the connected dots. Mm-hmm. You, you know, when you look at... Uh, VP Harris mm-hmm. she's a hip hop baby mm-hmm. she's right, getting ready right. for the president <laughs> right. Right. when you look at Hakeem Jeffries who mm-hmm. uh, is the leader of the first person of color to head uh, the minority party in Congress he's hip hop he's often quoting Biggie and right. he's quoting the legend Dope. look at Letitia James the top AG in the country hip hop Jamani Williams hip hop mm-hmm. Adrian Adams who's in charge of the speaker hip hop Eric Adams mayor hip hop right. all of these committee chairs hip hop major corporate leaders Look at the mayors across the country, Atlanta, my brother, mm-hmm. hip hop. We got the black mayors coming here. These are all hip hop right. mayors. So right. we sat down and while we were preparing for where we were going, mm-hmm. we were listening to hip hop. You know, like when, oh. I, when I do my walk on music, um, doing my press conferences, mm-hmm. you hear um, a Jay Z. That's right. You know? dope, dope. So we are, hip hop. Bet us. That's right. And so when it came down to putting that paper in to do mm-hmm. a hip hop museum, which is an amazing space in right. the Bronx, man, people go to it go is. Up there. No, it really is. It's beautiful. It, it, it was. It was a no brainer. You know, I had to mm. pay who invested in me. You right. know, hip hop was always part of my life. It was my motivator. I was. You know how boxers before they go into the ring. Right. Before I used to do the debates. During the um, campaigning, yeah. I would sit inside the room and I'm playing hip hop, man. Wow. So I'm going out there on the on the stage. I'm hyped. Because <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> you, know, you got to think about it for a moment. Millions of people are watching this debate, mm-hmm. and folks are looking and say, "Man, who's this? <laughs> this this this, this mm-hmm. cat here? Right. I think he's going to debate on this scale." They don't know I was few. With hip hop, right. that's saying wow. you could do anything. Nah, that's, a, that's a fact. That's a fact. Man. And it, it was so important too that the mayor did that because that five and a half million that was raised. After that, we were able to get other public and private institutions to pile on. So we're now at 58 million closing out to get the 65 million opening in the fall of 2025. So on behalf of Rocky and everybody on the board, right, thank you, Mayor stuff, Adams. Man. Definitely, man. It's definitely. impressive, man. That music. Let me tell you, something. that music. Nah, it on is, the water, man. It's, a, it's amazing, man. It's, it's, amazing. That, it's going to become an anchor, right. That mm. we're going to build the entire community around more mm. housing, affordable housing. You got affordable housing upstairs, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we go, it's going to, it's, it, it, you know, when you think about it, there's something sweet and romantic about the fact that Bronx, which gave the birth of hip hop, right. is now coming back to exactly. the revitalization right. of the Bronx. And, and right. it's a worldwide attraction. I feel like people are going to come from all over the world oh, without tourists doubt, and man. enjoy it, man. My, yeah. my next question I wanted to ask you, it's been a lot of incidents where prosecutors have been using rap lyrics as evidence without even presenting a higher burden of proof. Right, right. Now, for me, it's discrimination against people of color because it's co- they're constantly penalizing black and brown creators. Now, I can tell you as an artist, right, our creativity is what separates us. Yes. Our creativity is what helps us go to the next level and enables us to feed our family. It's our livelihood. And, we, you know, we have to have our First Amendment right protected. Now, you look at the situation in Atlanta with Young Thug, right? They have a lyric where he said... um ready to go to war like Russia, just as a metaphor. Right, right. They using that as an overt act mm-hmm. for conspiracy. Right, Seven right, years just right. for that lyric. Yeah, right, so, right, so, right, right. And, and, and I'm telling you as a as an artist, brother, we are always being creative. That's what makes you legendary. So the more creative an artist is, it, it ups his status. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So recently I went out to Albany to advocate Mm, it's mm. called it's called what's the exact name of this? The oh, rap snaps? on trial bill. The rap on trial mm, right, bill. Right, 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 right. Right. And I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, brother, because I, and I want to I want to show you if this this is not a get out of jail free pass. Right. Mm-hmm. The only thing it states is the lyrics initially the lyrics are out of bounds. Mm-hmm. Creates a test for the prosecutors. They can bring it in. If someone is foolish enough or stupid enough right, to commit right. a crime <laughs> and rap about it, <laughs> right, and, right. and for me, right. a, a person who followed your success, mm. I feel like this is in line with, with with some of the things you represent, which is you want to you want the police and the d- district attorneys to be able to do their jobs. Right, right. So I feel like that falls in line with that. So I wanted to get your take on it. Recently in California, they they signed a law, 
You know what I'm saying? That's consistent with freedom of, of creative expression. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, how did you feel about that law to New York? It passed the Senate three times. It seemed like it keeps getting stuck at the assembly. But with your support in the city right, of New York, right, 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 yeah. right. you get a common ground. But I wanted to get your take on it. No, though. I love that. And I love that because when we talked about some of the drill music stuff, right, um, and I had all of the drill rappers at uh, City Hall, this sort of falls in, 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 in line. I think going and charging folks with conspiracy over their creative uh, 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 entertainment and how to do so, you're crossing the line. Mm -hmm. You know, you're crossing the line. That's no different than having Brad Pitt go do a role where he's assassinating someone, then all of a sudden you're going to use a clip from the movie and say, exactly. okay, right, right. <laughs> So you're crossing the line. And that creativity has always existed when it comes down to black and brown people, like what they did with the first black heavyweight champion with the Man Act, because mm -hmm. he brought the, a, a white woman across state line. They created the Man Act and said he brought it across because of prostitution. Mm -hmm. So creativity has always been on how you come at, how you come at, at us. What we must do, when I brought yeah, in know. The drill rappers, because my son is a rapper. You know, matter he just sent me when I was coming. He sent me his new uh, album that's coming. That's coming out. But wow. what I told my my drill rappers, who many of them are producing some good product. Mm -hmm. When you have that great that direct connection of someone just took out someone and now you stomping on their graves, you yeah. are antagonizing their crew mm -hmm. to come back and retaliate. That was what we had to meet in that city hall. I said, listen, you have to be very careful, man, because this is going to connect you to a crime. Right. You know, if you if you just saying I just popped so and so, he just died the other day, and you stomping on his grave and you being yeah, disrespectful yeah. to his parent, that caused retaliation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we don't want those retaliatory shootings that's taking away our our, our, our young people is something we have to push back for. Mm -hmm. All these creative drill rappers that are doing some good product and, and talking about, you know, just in generality mm -hmm. about, you know, the creativity of the, of the music. No one has a problem with that. You can't have those direct correlations mm -hmm. of Someone just got shot on Tuesday. Now you're in a grave. Yeah, I just took this MF out, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I'm disrespecting right. mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Now you we're seeing retaliatory shooters mm -hmm. based on that, and I we don't want that. Right. Well, listen. But I'm with the I'm with that bill. I think it needs to get through. Oh uh, man, uh, this is I, groundbreaking I, I, drama I, I, hour. I, I, Hold on. <laughs> I, 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 I support the bill, wow. and I think That's that powerful, uh, I think I think it's going to get through. You have some very strong. Uh, uh, assembly people and senators mm -hmm. that's up there that's going to push it through but yes. what I think is important that what I like about what you're doing and um, I, w I was on the yesterday with my girl uh, uh, Angela Angela Yee oh, yeah. shout out to Angela. you know what what y'all doing uh, Charlemagne yeah, shout uh, to Charlemagne. what all of you are doing is you're taking the complexities of running cities and government and bringing it down in a very common person language because right. yeah. that's a sleeping Definitely. giant in our in our country mm, right if you can energize your listenership mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a game changer mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, VP Harris is president without even blinking. If right. you, if your if the young people that listen to you all right. of a sudden say, you know what, I'm gonna get up and just cast this vote for her, uh, right. and you know, you know, is she gonna be perfect? Is she gonna be everything you want? No, I'm not everything I want. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So you could always be creative and find a reason that you know what I'm gonna hate on this person. Mm -hmm. Listen. But she's better than what we what we have seen in the past. Right, right, right. right. Nah, definitely, definitely. Now, listen, man, I, I love to hear you say that, brother. You know, just to add on to what you said as far as the actors, man, you know, when Neo in The Matrix, you know, the, the, the more creative the movie is, right. the, the better we want to see it. When Bob Marley said, I shot the sheriff, we know damn well Bob Marley <laughs> was the <a> sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it, like it's an amazing thing, man, to hear you say that. And I got my next question I got to ask you. If I don't yeah. ask you this, I can't go back to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> um, why is it Why do you think Because I know you didn't implement them You mm -hmm. know what I mean Why do you think There are so many traffic cameras Right mm -hmm. And alternate side of the street parking Things going on In the neighborhoods Where working class Black and Latino people are Right But when I go to Poughkeepsie Or mm -hmm. certain parts of Long Island They don't have that Right It makes us feel like is targeted towards people who actually make less. Right, 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 right. Now, now I got hit with a couple of summonses. Now. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't let anybody fool you. you know? From the time to time, I have a left foot now. You right, know? Right, uh, right. You know, they used to drop those summons to me on when I was ball president a lot. Uh -huh. You know, they, there's, there's, the summons, uh, uh, 
allocation and location of the cameras should be throughout citywide. Now, what they do do, they look at areas where you have a real problem because they're around schools. We saw mm -hmm. a historical decrease in uh, accidents and fatalities around schools after cameras being placed mm. around schools because these a lot of people were speeding through schools. They was hitting these children. Um, the laws up in Poughkeepsie and other parts of the state is different. New York City, we have a whole different mindset because we, we what they call is a million plus. Mm -hmm. A lot of these local cities and towns upstate don't have a million plus people. So there are laws that are passed that just deals with New York City because it's a million plus. Okay. But we'll definitely do analysis to see where they place them mm -hmm. because they shouldn't be one-sided. Mm -hmm. shouldn't. And that was a law that came out of uh, Albany. You know, mm -hmm. One thing you learn in government, like everybody don't know their senator, their assembly mm -hmm. person, their congressperson. But everyone knows they mayor. Right. You know that's what I'm saying? Fact. And when people are pissed off, man, they right, know, right. you know, Kat stepped at me a few months ago and said, man, I'm getting divorced, man. It's your fault, man. Wow. You know? Wow. <laughs> man can blame for everything. Wow. Man. We don't control the MTA. We don't control, like, the, the top thing people are, you want to get some folks riled up, particularly in the hood, uh -huh. talk migrants and asylum seekers. Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know they like, man, Eric, what are you doing, man? You you got these cats stepping in, taking our jobs, taking our home. Take, listen, 207,000 migrants and asylum seekers came to the city. 207,000, mm -hmm. 1.5 the size of Albany. A whole nother city came into the city. Wow. I can't stop buses from coming in. It's against federal law. Mm hmm I can't say when you're here, you're not going to get three meals a day, a place to stay, 40,000 children we had to educate, we had to wash clothing, we have to do everything, got to right. give you a place to sleep. There's local law say, Eric, you are required by law to do it. Mm -hmm. I can't even allow them to work. Federal mm. law says, no, you can't allow them to work. And so I had a team of them, migrants and asylum seekers. I said, listen, I want y'all to be my cleanup campaign. We're going to remove graffiti, clean the streets, and we're going to give you a small stipend. Mm -hmm. Federal law, federal government said you can't do that either. You know, wow. So I have all these jobs that are open mm -hmm. that folks don't want to do, and I'm restricted. It costs us five billion dollars, you know, to manage the migrants and asylum seekers issue, and and you know people are angry without really understanding. Yo, this brother don't have nothing to do with this man. And is that because right, right, right. New York is a sanctuary state? I, I'm glad you asked that because people conflate that the two. Mm -hmm. Sanctuary city and state mm -hmm. means that if you are an undocumented person and you come here we can't deny you the services okay. you know so if you need to go to the hospital if you need to call the fire department uh, um we we can't turn you over to ice the migrants and asylum seekers they were paroled into the city mm. they have nothing to do with a sanctuary city they were okay. uh, they were paroled into the country they here legally gotcha. and it has nothing to do with sanctuary city those are for everyday immigrants who gotcha. find their way here these migrants and asylum seekers are paroled here into okay. the city and uh, people think that it's the sanctuary city that impacts it, it has nothing to do with them okay. a, 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 wow. a, a, at all now we got a dangerous gang that's from Venezuela that mm. is making root here. The overwhelming number of the, uh, of the migrants and asylum seekers, they just want to come here and they want to just move up the, the, move up the ladder. And when I go to the to the when I go to the um, shelters, they tell me, Eric, we don't want your food. We don't want anything from you. <laughs> we we want to get our hustle on. Right. You know? Wow. <laughs> we want to wow. come in and get our hustle. They want to work. Wow, that's deep, right. man. Yep. Hey, listen, man. Congratulations on that new data that came in. It is. It shows that you're doing your job. Yes. My last question. I know yes. you. I know you're busy. This is my last question because this is the drama hour. <laughs> Who is Mayor Eric Adams' mm. top five MCs of all time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gotta ask. Okay, bro. now how do we uh, tell me how do we put it into uh, MCs, rappers, or just rappers? And, okay, okay. It, um, well, I got I got to start off with number one, Papoose. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all heard, heard, right, heard it live and direct, baby. You heard it. Y'all heard it live and direct on the Trauma Hour. Uh, and, and, and I'm a KRS one. Guy. KRS man, I love KRS. You know, um, he was a real uh, pioneer. Definitely, you know, man. and I won't be able to come back across the bridge if I don't say Biggie. You got to, you got to. Uh, uh, Biggie is uh, definitely. 
are on that list, and I will not be able to go back home if I don't see my son J J O. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Shout he, to J O. He, he, he's definitely going to. We got to get some of his music up and, here. And, uh, and my girl, I saw the, I saw a few weeks ago M C Light. Oh yeah. wow, Light is a rock, <laughs> baby. Shout to M C Light. You know. Nah, we appreciate you, brother man. Yes, Thanks brother. for coming on the show. Thank you, man. We know you're really busy, good. man. You we know. wish we wish you nothing but the best moving forward. Th- thank you. And, you know, next time I pop in here, I'm gonna be wearing my diamond crest. <laughs> 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 Hip hop and cheese. <laughs>